Welcome to the fourth volume or section of this course. In this volume, I'm going to be moving to the 3D modeling environment. The first thing we've got to do is switch workspaces. Click on the workspace switch. A workspace menu pops up. Let's choose 3D modeling. You can customize the 3D modeling workspace in whatever way is convenient for you, just like you can the other workspaces in AutoCAD. To refresh on this topic, just take a look at Volume 1 of this course. I'm going to adjust the positioning of my palettes here. Let's just move them around. Let me right-click and deselect the Groups and Sections palettes, which I won't be using for now. Now let's go to the View tab. I'm going to double-click on the Properties palette. As you may have noticed, after 10 hours with me, I do like to have easy access to the Properties palette. Let's go back to the Home tab. Now let's fly out the 3D Primitive subtools. We've got seven solid 3D primitives to work with, and these, as the name indicates, are primitive shapes. We've got a box, cylinder, cone, sphere, pyramid, wedge, and torus. Let's activate the box with a left click. Same as in the 2D drafting environment, AutoCAD asks me to specify the first corner. And I'll do that with a left click in model space. Now, we can left click to place the second corner, or we can enter a length and width value. Let's say 5, tab 6, and press enter. Lastly here, I need to enter the height of my box. Let's say 7, and press enter. Now how come our box looks like a rectangle, a flat rectangle? Well, that's because we're in top view, and so we're seeing our box from the top. Let's activate Orbit by pressing down the Shift key. As you remember from our previous lesson, Orbit lets us pan in 3D space. And now our geometry does indeed look like a box. We can also go to the View palette, 3D Navigation, and take an isometric view. Top view. Southeast isometric, and so on. You can also use the view cube for navigation. Click on the home position, for example, or on one of the cube's quadrants or corners. Your cube might look different. I'm using the 2D wireframe visual style. Let's expand the visual style menu. Here's realistic. Let's go back to 2D wireframe. Okay, let me zoom out and make some space for my second primitive. Let's expand the menu flyout and left click on the cylinder tool. The command line shows us a number of options for creating the cylinder. We're going to learn how to use these options in a subsequent lesson on the cylinder. In this tutorial, since I'll be going through all of the 3D primitives, I'm just going to show you how to use the base radius method. Specify the center point with a left click. Radius, let's say three units. Press Enter to register. The height now, two units, Enter. And here is our cylinder. Let's bring in the cone now. Once again, we'll specify a center point. Next, a radius. I'm going to enter a value, three units, press Enter. Lastly, the height of the cone. Let's say seven units, press Enter to register. Let's go back to the 3D Primitives menu flyout. Click on Sphere. The sphere is a very simple primitive. Once again, I specify the center point, next the radius or diameter, let's say 5 units. OK, I'm stuck here. I'm not able to pan left. That means I've got a regen issue. I've got dynamic input toggled on. I'm going to type in RE and press Enter to accept. AutoCAD regenerates the model, so now I'm able to pan my model right off the screen. Let's expand the Primitives menu flyout now and select the Pyramid tool. First step is to select a center point, and the second point determines the base size. Next, the height of the pyramid. Let's enter a value, 7 units, let's say, and press Enter. I'm going to take a look at the next primitive now, the Wedge tool. First step is to select the first corner point. Next, we select the second corner point, and the third point determines the height of the thick side of the wedge. I'm going to enter a numeric value, 5 units, and press Enter. Let's take a look at the last 3D primitive, the torus. Center point, radius, 
and lastly, the radius of the tube. The torus is a primitive you'd use if you want to create, for example, a rubber or silicon seal. This concludes my introduction to AutoCAD's 3D primitives. In our next lesson, we're going to learn how to edit a 3D primitive, and then I've got a lesson on each primitive so you can learn how to use all of the options.